Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Saturday, November 4, 2023, left 3.15 p.m. Eastern. It is necessary to make your mind a prayer, the heart full of love, and every breath a melody of devotion then the soul becomes a glorified song of compassion, mercy, understanding, and humility. Annalise Skarin. One of the most beautiful experiences in this life is the feeling of devotion. When we are truly devoted, we release the selfish agenda of our ego and are surrendered to something much greater than ourselves. We've given up every imperative need to get something back in return for our practice of giving and are simply enjoying the sensation of being liberated from our perpetual list of demands and needs. We could say that the greatest lovers in the world are those who can relax into the deepest feeling of devotion within their heart, which is attuned to a love that transcends all conditions, agendas, and limitations. The energy of devotion can take on many forms. We can be devoted to a lifestyle, a person, a way of being, a project, or even achieving a desired goal. The difference between being devoted and committed to something is within the quality of the experience. Commitment is more of a mental excursion while devotion is a journey through the heart. Through devotion, there is this continual undercurrent of love which flows through every thought, feeling, and word uttered. The love it radiates holds this juicy heart-opening quality, connecting our mind to our soul, allowing us to taste the sweet, luscious flavor of our own divine existence. When we practice being in the energy of devotion, we are feeding the heart with a joy that has no end to it. This ultimately brings real satisfaction into our lives. Filling that great longing and yearning we each have for the everlasting joy we feel is missing inside. Real devotion is one of the greatest secrets to finding our spiritual freedom in this lifetime. The feeling of it alleviates our suffering instantly as it allows every action to feel sacred and aligned with our life purpose. It is the most essential nutrient necessary to create a truly exquisite life that is deeply fulfilling on all levels. The highest reward for an act of kindness is not what you get by doing it, but what you become by doing it, unknown. One of the greatest challenges with choosing a life of devotion is that we may fear losing ourselves in the beliefs, heart, mind, or life of our beloved. We might fall into some codependent relationship, feeling an addiction to them, where we may become obsessed by a need for their approval of our every action, belief, life decision. In this unhealthy state, our beloved becomes like the sun, and we become like the earth, revolving around them. When we remember that we are the sun, and our beloved is just another sun, spirit, we've met along the way. we can feel that they are actually revolving around our life as well. From this perspective, we experience what a healthy, devoted relationship is like, and these two bodies gravitationally spin around each other in a natural, respective, meaningful, and magnetic way. In a healthy state of devotion, we are seeing the bigger picture. Our feet are rooted in the ground beneath us, and our branches are extended up 
out into the stars. We are not clinging to anyone or anything. We are relaxed in our own essence, feeling alive, conscious, and appreciating each moment of existence. There is a great reverence each day we have to be in relationship with our beloved. We know it all can end at any moment and thus never take it for granted. There is a solid feeling of connection to the love shared without depending on it to find the love within ourselves. In this healthy state of devotion, we feel connected with everyone and everything in our world. Love is one of the most dangerous explorations in this life because it is the most rewarding in order to experience real love we must choose to completely lose ourselves to it. We must choose to become so devoted to the real feeling of love, the essence of love, that is free from attachment, fear, and possession. We must choose to walk that very fine line between losing ourselves in a healthy or unhealthy way in a devoted relationship. We must choose to take the risk to see ourselves at the beloved sees us and know that it is our own innocent hearts we are longing to connect with when the day finally comes to an end. As long as your relationship with yourself remains the main priority, you will remain in a healthy state of devotion. You will be aligned to your soul's purpose and thus be able to show up with the greatest love to give. When you live in fear of losing yourself to your beloved, there is this clinging to your ego. And you end up resisting love, fearing its power, and then not allowing your ego to surrender fully into it. As long as the ego remains in control, love will be kept on the sideline. When we can realize that our heart is the main source of love, the infinite source of love itself. We can share this love endlessly, stop withholding it from others in our lives. As we walk the path of devotion, we might discover how the ego is an absolute genius at missing the truth. It cannot imagine that there is a bigger love to experience on the inside than what it thinks is on the outside. It is only through exploring total devotion to our soul, our spirit, and infinite self that the sacred meeting of deep eternal love is discovered between you and your beloved. This is the one vile, vital truth to be realized that will let a continual stream of joy flow through your life. Now, when you surrender completely to this infinite source that connects your heart with your soul, you will always rise and fall in love with your beloved. Then you can relax fully into the devotional experience. You are free from the fear of codependency and are no longer worried about becoming lost in the mind and the life of your beloved. You become so rooted in the exploration of deep eternal love within yourself that you can allow yourself to take risks, love deeper, be foolish in how much you love, and continuously fall further into love with your beloved over and over and over again. As you dissolve into love, your ego fades. You're not thinking about loving. You're just being love, radiating like the sun, Ram Das. Every one of us, wishes we had the courage to live a life overflowing with an abundance of joy and love. Yet to reach this level of love means we must choose to surrender through every fear we are gripping onto. We must choose to let go of control, trust that love is the greatest guide we will ever find. We must choose to devote our entire heart and mind to the idea and feeling of being in love with ourselves and our lives. 
This is the place where the heart never, ever closes down for any reason whatsoever. When we are fully devoted to ourselves, to finding the greatest love within our own heart, we find that love was always there, always waiting to show us the way home. The other big issue that we all come to eventually across, we eventually come across is that the ego is the most tenacious master of resisting love. It is always cautious and skeptical about falling in love and feels devotion is only for the weak and the needy. The ego simply doesn't trust love because if it felt what love really was, it would die. It would have to give up all its strategies for protecting itself from love and learn the path of surrender. The ego only knows control and separation, me versus you, and avoids falling into the ultimate state of love at all costs because it knows it has no control in that space. The more we can surrender to trusting love, the more we will find that love pours into every wounded crack and crevice hidden in our being. It is only through giving up our attachment to our ego that we can find what real love is all about. We must choose to lose our small self to discover our big self, which is constantly growing and evolving in love, always being reborn, fresh, and new. At the highest level of awareness, all devotion is devotion to the self. The self is omnipresent, alive, and conscious within all beings. When we know this, see this, and honor this truth, we simply give up all limited approaches to love and upgrade it for this higher version of reality. From this space, we can be totally devoted to a partner, friend, child, family, or any person for that matter. We then can lose ourselves completely in that experience because we know that ultimately it is a form of devotion to who we truly are. There is no separation from ourselves and our beloved. Our beloved is our perfect mirror, reflecting back to us all the multidimensional aspects inside ourselves that we cannot see. It is through seeing the one self, realizing its awesome power, that we can stop being afraid of devotion. It is our devotion to this highest state of awareness, seeing the one self in all beings that actually enables us to be free. We are no longer limited by our expression, bound by our beliefs, or stuck in suppression. In devotion to the one, we gain access to the deepest levels of joy, freedom, truth. We are no longer fearing love, yet only in gratitude and reverence of it. This sacred relationship allows us to reveal our highest life purpose and direction. It is only from this place that real everlasting happiness is found. This state of being knows that life is truly perfect, just as it is, and there is absolutely nothing we need to do to make it better in any possible way. Be lamps unto yourselves. Be refuges unto yourselves. Look not for a refuge in anyone besides yourselves. Buddha. If you are ready to start creating a life of devotion, even this week, have a few fun and practical steps that I have. 
you can do to help it get rooted in your daily life. The first thing is to make a devotion altar where you add everything on it you are devoted to in your life. If it's too big or something, take a picture of it, put it up there. When you add everything on it you are devoted to in your life, it can be as simple as a cardboard box with a, with a nice cloth on top where you place holy pictures, beautiful art, inspiring statues, heart-opening gifts, precious stones, wise sayings, or anything you feel is sacred for you. Add everything that you want to open your heart up to and feel a deeper connection with. Sit in front of your altar and meditate on the items on it every morning. Feel your heart opening up to the devotional energy it represents. By trusting in this sacred connection, each time you glance at your altar, the energy will build each day. If you want to burn some incense and light a candle to make it official, then do so. The next invitation for you is to write down all the beliefs that are creating a healthy and unhealthy level of devotion for you. Start with a list of every unhealthy or limited belief you have about being devoted. This is your let go list. And just know it is the gateway to experiencing a healthier state of devotion. These beliefs may sound something like, I'm afraid of losing myself in my partner. It's not safe to fall in love. I am not worthy of a deep experience of love. I'm unable to let go of control over my life. Once you have written down all your negative limiting beliefs, write down all the uh, opposing positive beliefs which counterbalance them. See these, so these would sound something like, I am excited to lose myself and my partner. It's safe to fall and rise in love. I'm worthy of the deepest experiences of love. I am looking forward to letting go of control over my life. We all feel that we have to, we have to uh, control everything. And we're scared to death to not be in control or to let go of control. Because what is it? It's an unknown. And we all know that the unknown is where all the possibilities are. But yet, still, we withhold ourselves. Once we find each specific positive belief that balances, cancels out the negative beliefs, we can let them both go. Being free from both beliefs allows us to experience a deeper release, a free fall and surrender into our infinite being where the greatest level of stillness and silence of the mind is found. It is this state of pure stillness, that our greatest innocent and most authentic being is discovered. Here, we can realize our most natural state of devotion that is free from all resistance, control, and fear. Devotion revealed in this space will only create more joy, ecstasy, and freedom in our life. It is from stepping in this direction that we discover the perfect life, where we see that everything and everyone around us is a deep, eternal, loving, and gift in the most intimate ways. You are born with a tremendous possibility. You are born with a light within you. Listen to the still, small voice within and that will guide you. Oh, so. We, we have a propensity to deny ourselves the love that we are. Do we all do it? In most cases, yes, we all do it. And we don't realize that the very thing that we try to 
avoid or walk around is our ticket to freedom. And we most know that if we don't genuinely, I mean deep, genuinely, love ourselves. I've asked, you know, I've asked that question to many people in conversation, not right off the bat. And the interesting thing is, is that they don't address it. I may write to somebody and ask them, do you love yourself? And a lot of the times when they text back or answer me back, they don't respond to it. They ignore it. Why do you, under, why do you believe or think so many of us are in such strife in relationships? Why is that? Because we haven't learned how to love ourselves. You could say on the surface that you, oh, I love myself. But I'm talking about deep, deep, deep down within you. And also to forgive yourself for all stuff. You're the only one that can. Relying on someone else to forgive you is crazy. You forgive yourself. This is where the ego mind pushes us into what? Worried about what other people think. When you're devoted to a person, first it should be you, because then you won't know how to be devoted to anything else if you aren't devoted to you. So when you devote yourself to someone else, You're not attached to them, okay? You're not attached to them. You deeply and eternally love them, but you're not attached to them, which is a biggie. Most of us become attached to each other. What happens? We suffer. Most of us don't understand that when you deeply, eternally love someone, It doesn't mean you're attached to them. And this is why there's so much pain and suffering on this planet. One of the main reasons is that we get attached. And I know it's it's a little confusing, or maybe a lot for some, Well, if you deeply love someone, you're going to automatically become attached to them. You know, the only reason we become attached to others is because we don't have the confidence, faith, and trust in ourselves. We fear. We become attached to others because we fear if we don't become attached to them, we will lose them. And when we are devoted to ourselves first and we love ourselves deeply and we have forgiven ourselves and we focus on gratitude and being in the now, then it's, it's pretty much a breeze to devote yourself to others. And the love we're talking about with ourselves is deep eternal love. It's way, way beyond romantic love. And I think that we get that confused because what? The word says love, right? The word says, so we identify that. With romantic love.
Now, the vibration of love alone has been scientifically proven to alter the shape and structure of physical molecules such as water. And according to scientific studies, water molecules are directly affected by the words, sounds, and thoughts they are exposed to. Doesn't that sound familiar for ourselves? Since we're over 70% water ourselves. It is continuously impacted by the vibrations of negative or positive words we send into it. The alternative healing community accepts that the vibration of love will literally create a physical healing in our bodies. And what's the biggest, the biggest deterrent of this is our willingness to let go of control and resistance to love and allow in all the light, loving, healing feelings we can give to ourselves. The more we love, the more you love you, the healthier you will be, and the more energy you will instantly feel. You will know you are healing, as you will naturally feel more energized, alive, and happier as you continue to bathe yourselves to the healing energy of self-love. You realize that all of us on this planet have the power to heal ourselves. It is a proven fact. Now, the more that you don't love you, the unhealthier you will be and the less energy you will instantly feel. Okay? We question ourselves. And that that ego mind convinces us that, oh, no, you can't do that. Do you know that little voice, that ego mind comes in, see, you can't do that. That's not, you're not going to be able to do that. And then you respond to the ego mind and say, you're not in charge here. And it fades out again. When you look at the human being in all of its amazing dimension and form, you see that the physical body is simply the initial layer of what we truly are. At the core, we are spiritual beings overflowing with consciousness and light energy. We are the infinite energy and great force that runs through all things. This is surprisingly accurate to what they described in Star Wars movies. You know, the, 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 the saying, may the force be with you, which behaves much like a spider web matrix of conscious energy that connects everything in this universe. We find our, our access point and we can tap into its eternal healing spring of inner peace, physical rejuvenation, and a truly fulfilling life. When we look deep enough at the nature of health and the main cause of it, you can see exactly how our bodies are shaped by the mind's beliefs, perceptions, judgments, and interpretations of reality. Our breath is the main conduit of life energy which enters us and is how we greet, meet, and merge with this entire universe. When we are living a, f a life full of stress, worry, and fear, we are barely breathing. We are clinging to the mind, gripping into the boy, onto the boy, not trusting life, and not taking the risk to fully participate in the totality of this awesome creation. We are gripping onto the body, not trusting life, and not taking the risk to fully participate 
in the totality of this awesome creation. If we consciously practice an awareness of our breath over just a few days, we will start to notice how we are holding our breath, holding it. When we are doing it and learn to let it go through the simple practice of watching our breath, we become so conscious of what's occurring inside that we cannot allow in the life deteriorating and energetic depreciating experiences of stress inside. Our body reaches an intensity breakdown point and becomes dis-ease. It stops being at ease, feeling connected to the loving force and matrix of life energy that is constantly moving through everything. If we want perfect health, it's vital that we learn how to connect with our breath. This is the first gateway to healing and finding that natural flowing connection with nature and with the five elements, air, fire, water, earth, spirit around us. Imagine how many people, how many of us on this planet are already fighting an illness of any kind, mental, emotional, or physical, and are sincere about finding out how to heal themselves from it. We will need to take a long, deep look inside ourselves at how much love we have for you. How much love do you have for you in order to open up this connection to to true radical healing? The first step is to find the deepest possible love you can remember having for yourself in your life. Look at any experience you can find where nothing else mattered except for the love you had for you. The sensation of pure devotion and love that you have for you is the essential foundation you'll need to fully hear yourself. When you reach deep enough inside and find the feeling of this pure, sweet, devoted love for yourself, you can direct that love into any part of your body and begin to change the energy of that area. Using your breath, Pull the energy from the natural air around you. Feel into these five elements that you are connected with. Use this connection to summon a natural healing sensation to enter every cell of your body. Now understand when you're... When, when, you're talk, when we're talking about breathing in, remember, a cubic meter of space has enough power to boil all the oceans on this planet, in it and on it. So when you're breathing in, you're breathing in your energy. doesn't mean you can taste it see it, feel it, but it is. That's what we're all doing. We just don't identify it. We don't, we don't understand it. And this is a miracle. The moment that you realize that there is no way to make a home, then this whole existence is a home. Then wherever you are, you are at home, of course, in miracles. The life that we are living is a physical and also a metaphysical ride we're on. So we're we're physical and we're beyond physical. Meta means beyond. So the life we are living is a physical and also a beyond physical ride. 
we need to understand how simple it is to manifest the things we desire if we are to truly enjoy our lives completely. It's important to understand that thoughts contain a powerful energy within them. And when accompanied with positive belief and emotion, they have the magical ability to heal. It works very similarly to how we would tune a radio station to our favorite station when we change our mental and emotional channel to a healing frequency. We feel like we could start dancing on the inside. The highest broadcast we can listen to is one of lightness, joy, freedom, love, unity, authenticity, and vulnerability. It is not the station that makes you feel fear, control, resistance, defensiveness, being right or demanding things are a certain way. When you step into the radio tower in your brain, choose only to play the higher thoughts found on these lighter stations, you begin broadcasting healing feelings throughout the body and can start fe feeling real energy shifting results within a matter of hours. On our inner exploration of healing, you would take a few minutes to meditate on the intention that you are to heal your life in a certain amount of time. Okay? Feel into exactly what that amount of time is for you. Is it one week, three months, or six months? It must not feel too short or too long. Yet just enough time that creates an excitement and a relaxation in the body and mind. When you hold this intention sacred every day, you activate this energetic healing magnetic response within the DNA of your body. These highly intelligent cells start programming themselves to heal on the new time schedule. From this space, you start attracting positive situations, people, foods, supplements, or environments that create an even stronger healing response on your system. When enough healing momentum in the thought patterns are formed, you will manifest a positive energetic shift that takes effect on your physical form. As your body's cells change, you might experience a deep release of unpleasant emotions such as shame, guilt, anger, fear, and even false pride. We are psycho-emotional organisms, meaning that our emotional, mental, and physical bodies are deeply intertwined. When one aspect is transformed, it impacts the others instantly as well. This means to remain in a healed body, we must give up listening to the stations that contain those harmful emotional experiences. The old habits we must release are criticizing ourselves, blaming ourselves, judging ourselves, feeling guilty, ashamed, withdrawing from our loved ones, hiding our light from the world, punishing ourselves, attacking ourselves, and resisting love. When these harmful behaviors are outweighed by the positive feelings about ourselves, we naturally maintain a whole healed state. It is only when a, subst a substantial level of relaxation is experienced around these harmful emotions that we create a space within and an abundance of positive feelings can suddenly come pouring in. The key ingredient to all of this in healing is always self-love. 
Always, always, always. This is not a hard thing to do. It is simply a matter of looking at what is lovable about you. It's about honoring your true self and stop believing in the negative false self that brought you into a state of dis-ease. The false self is the limited one who struggles with the mind, fights with, the, with everything, always has to be right, pushes itself too hard, works too little or too much, and doesn't believe it is always lovable. It simply doesn't feel lovable, worthy of love, or that it has a kind of love others would want to receive. It simply doesn't believe in love at all and is protecting itself from getting hurt again, choosing to remain defended and in control at all costs. When we give up on this false way of being, we give ourselves space to discover our true self, which is directly tuned into our spiritual essence. In this liberated space, we feel connected and know we have access to states of deep, eternal, loving acceptance of who we are. We abide in openness, love, joy, peacefulness, curiosity, compassion, and easily have reverence for ourselves just the way we are. From this place, it is easy to forgive ourselves, be kind to ourselves, love every aspect of ourselves, and have compassion for the state we were once in. It is from repeating the feeling of having this warm, open-hearted, cozy sensation that we will turn ourselves into a healing magnet and manifest a dis-ease free body throughout our lives. Join in the meditation. I'll return to close us out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Look even deeper within. What is generating your thoughts? What is the source of your thoughts that are coming through your mind right now? Ask yourself randomly today, if you are not the whirlwind of thoughts, who are you? Then look beneath them and beyond them. Sit with the question for at least 10 minutes today. Where are my thoughts coming from? The infinite universe, your consciousness, and change are the only three consistent things in life. Meditate on them all throughout your day today. Practice embracing this truth on all levels, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Let this truth deep deeply into your core. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. And we'll return here Sunday, November 5, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest, the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's happening within you or around you.